everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is and wherever in the world you may be. My name is Matt Wynn, your podcast host and resident secure identities nerd. Welcome to another episode of HID Connects. Now, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably fall into one of two camps. One, you're a part of the security industry, or two, you're my mom. But for those of you in the first camp, no matter how long you've been a part of this industry that we know and love, I can guarantee that you've seen an element of change and evolution from all sorts of perspectives. And if you're a history nerd like me, taking a look back is a helpful way to predict where we will go into the future. And that's why I'm particularly excited to be joined in the studio by a very special guest who has covered the security industry for many, many years. Now, also known as the mayor of the security industry, please help me welcome Ralph Jensen, publisher of Security Today and Campus Security and Life Safety Magazine. Welcome, Ralph. Thanks for joining. Introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself and uh, the publications you oversee. Thank you, Matt. It's great to be here. I drove down uh, just an hour or so ago from Dallas to Austin, and I really do like the uh, uh, speed limits now so that you can get here before the end of the day so very very good to be here thank you for the invite appreciate you coming down and uh, the fact that you beat austin traffic that is uh, an (laughs) accomplishment in and of itself so thanks for joining and uh, just speaking of you uh, mentioned that you have a green thumb for roses which is probably impossible in the texas heat so tell us more Uh, about your your talent there i don't in my case it just isn't really talent it's uh, good luck and uh, plenty of water but my rose is actually the first crop will bloom in the heat and they're magnificent Um, and then of course when it is really hot every day and all night long as well they're not very happy (laughs) and they don't even really really like water for for, for that much and right now they're they're blooming again the the temperature's wonderful and uh, I think that's going to be my next career I love that well, uh, they're fickle, so uh, hopefully they'll keep you busy. So that's good. But uh, thank you again so much for joining us. And let me just say, I've had the privilege of working with Ralph since I've joined the industry nine years ago. So uh, this is a very big treat for me, and I'm honored to have you here. So thank you very much, Ralph. So now that we know who our special guest is, let's get started by diving into this episode's burning question. Looking back on the security industry, what have we learned? So, Ralph, let's start off. Let's talk about you. Tell us about your career trajectory and uh, when did you get started and then what have you done up until now? It's funny you'd use the word trajectory. I can't even say it. It's hard to say. I screwed it up too. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny you'd use that word because I feel like at this point in my career, I've uh, accomplished all I want to accomplish. I'm not announcing a retirement. I'm not saying no either. So I jumped into the journalism field, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm this old, 45 years ago, I think, and it was kind of a fluke. My in-laws owned a small newspaper in Wyoming, and there was an oil boom, and the paper, the newspaper started to grow quickly. I took advantage of the the family business and joined, joined the ranks. I was making... Arm & Hammer baking soda at the time for Church & Dwight in Green River, Wyoming. I'm glad I'm, don't misunderstand, I liked my job, but I'm glad I made the career move. I've had a great time. How did I get to the magazine? I went to work for the Air Force for five years in public affairs, and when I left the Air Force, I just, I moved to Texas and no job, no anything. Uh, and started looking. The economy was different then. There were jobs everywhere. And I hooked up with Stevens Publishing. And Craig Stevens was quite the entrepreneur. In his mind, he would just think of a, a publication and we'd do it. Security Today was known as Security Products Magazine. And that evolution has come to uh, what it is today. It started out as a true tabloid magazine, products only. Now it's a size A book, and it looks like everybody else, I guess. The amazing thing about security today, and I I just am going to reference it by that name, is we would hire a young person out of, oh, let's just say the University of Texas, okay? 
and they wouldn't stay very long. And it was very frustrating to me. I was the associate publisher, and and they think that the grass was greener on the other side of the, the hill, that cliche, and yeah, it may have been, maybe it was, I don't know. But we went through probably three editors pretty quick. Wow. And I got really tired of hiring them. And so I went to my boss and said, hey, I have this great idea. I'll be the editor. There you go. And I felt like I was going to stick around a while, so it would be a safe bet. And, well, here we are. Um, some 25 years later, the magazine is, oh, boy, 25 or 26 years old. And we're actually the young, youngest magazine in the industry. The other publications have been around longer than us. It's been a great, great opportunity. One of the things that I've liked best about this is the people I work with. They've been so supportive and uh, really appreciate all that they've done for me. I've been at the company 29 years. I know I don't look that old. You're only 40, so, I mean, this is mind-blowing to me. I know it is. (laughs) Can you imagine what my mother thinks? (laughs) A couple of people I want to mention, if you don't mind, my boss, Dan LaBianca. He's the president of our group within the company. And, uh, you know, this has been quite a year for me. I had my knee replaced, and to top that, I had a heart attack. And if it wasn't for Dan and the CEO of the company, Rajiv, I, I don't know where I'd be because they would send me home. I, I wasn't smart enough to figure it out. Ralph, you've had a problem. Go fix it. And they would send me home and say, don't come back until whatever time. So very much appreciate their support. And uh, it's, it's been a great Great opportunity for me. Excellent. Well, we are thrilled that you are here and in full capacity and and glad that we have the opportunity. So again, thanks for coming down. I wouldn't say I'm in full capacity, but that's okay. I feel like you're doing great. (laughs) Doing great. So let's go back in time a little bit. So uh, reflect for us. Whenever you first joined the security industry, what did things look like back then? Ah, that's a great question. Matt, you're probably not familiar with black and white TV. I have heard of this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, the security industry is similar. As a kid, we had a black and white TV. We only got one channel and not very good. And then color came along. So that difference. When I joined this, uh, the magazine uh, 26 years ago, it was, it was just boring, just like black and white TV. And today it's anything but boring so I, if that makes any sense, that's, that's how I see it. Not a dull moment anymore. And uh, I never would have thought the security industry to be boring. So I find that absolutely fascinating. Let's take a look back as well. So knowing that you've seen so much over the year, is there anything that you really believed in at one point that you might take back or your opinion has changed or evolved on? Well, I am a journalist and I'm, a, I'm skeptical of just about everything. And I, I want to have it proven to me. I, let, let me just step back for one second. When Please. you'd go to the trade shows 30 years ago, there would, there would be a train track with a little train going around in a circle, or there would be somebody with, or a, some kind of apparatus that would be shuffling cards and dealing cards. That was how people advertised or how they showed off their newest products. It was a joke. It did, it, that isn't real life. Now when you go see products that people have manufactured, you can see exactly how they work. And it's, it's real time. It's the real deal. So I'm not saying that old-time security was fake. Mm-hmm. It's changed. Yeah, just yeah. different now. Just different. Okay, so knowing that... You've seen so much over the years. Has there really been anything that stuck out in terms of a surprise? Has anything surprised you over the years? Well, there's a couple of things that come to mind real quick. And I, I want to say it was back in the late 90s. I was at a trade show in Las Vegas, ISC West, I presume. Although GSX has been there a couple of times. ISC West. I'm walking around the show hall. Back then, it was enormous. A thousand booths, and I come upon this guy that has a ten by ten booth, and he's selling cameras. You know, they, back then they were all the same. So I walk up, I introduce myself, and lo and behold, it's Frederick, Frederick Nelson, and he's going to show me this IP camera. And I listen to his spiel, and 
I thought, wow, that's great, and walked away, and I thought to myself, I might have even mumbled this, wow, that'll never happen. Well, <laughs> look where we are today and how the industry has, it's taken a while, and I wanted to point that out at some time, at a point in time today, how the adoption of the IP camera took its time. The industry is fickle, but gratefully, here is the IP camera. People have adopted it, and the end user is benefiting from, in this case, Martin Grin's brilliant idea of having cameras over the network. In our case, as far as the magazine is concerned, I want to make one thing really clear, and I don't know if my counterparts would agree or not, don't really care. (laughs) We aren't part of the security industry. Mm. We're part of the publishing industry, but we're very fortunate to be supportive or supporters or able to hang on to the security industry to do our job. So that said, security products would gather the newest products at ISC West at a trade show that was called As Is, and we would publish those products. No internet, but every month we would have the newest of the new in in that magazine. And lo and behold, before long, that new product that we saw in January and appeared in March had changed in June. Mm. And it was really quite the development of time, a time lapse of products getting better, I want to say bigger. They weren't getting bigger. They may actually have been getting smaller. But amazing how these genius people could work work their trade, work their craft, and make the products better. Looking back on that, and maybe even looking ahead into today, have there been any, like, game changers, anything that you saw as a turning point in the business? Oh, wow. That's a a great question because right right now... We see uh, AI as a game changer, storage capacity, storage ability. Uh, You see people like uh, uh, Dean Draco come in with his all-cloud solution. You know, same situation. I remember talking to Dean the first time and walking out of that interview, uh, I think right here in Austin, and I'm going, man, that'll never work. (laughs) So if you want to buy some stock, if Ralph says it won't work, buy the stock. Okay. There you go. <laughs> the insider trading on this uh, on this episode yeah. of HID Connects. That's cool. Let me try to bring a couple of ideas together. So you mentioned earlier in talking about the IP camera, you know, that will never work. And then slowly but surely the adoption happened and now it's ubiquitous. And then we look at, you know, trends like AI. And sometimes people might say the security industry is slow to adopt new technologies. Would you agree or disagree with that statement, I would do both. Okay, I would. I would have to say that the industry as a whole is slow. They want to be sure. They want to be sure it works for them. And and you drill down. You think of the industry. Does it work? Does it work in uh, multifamily housing or multi-tenant buildings? Does it work in the in the office that I'm in? I think people want to adopt now want to adopt AI faster than they adopted the IP camera. Mm. I think there's a sense that uh, technology is the real deal. What are your thoughts on this idea of everything integrated? You know, you talked about the cloud earlier, and perhaps you may have said there were different pieces in silos, right? Physical security is in one silo, cyber network security could be in another. How have you seen these walls come down, for lack of better words. And what is your take on what that means for the industry with everyone kind of being forced to play nicely together? You really have some good questions. And uh, it kind of throws me back a little bit. When I started in the industry covering products and technology, it was all about the company that could provide everything. Mm. We can do it from start to finish. No, you don't need to go talk to that person. We have it. That was a huge change, the open platform. And it was a big change. What do you see as 
the future of the industry as it comes to more partnerships, more integrations, more playing nice. Now, is this just kind of a kumbaya, let's come together for the betterment of the end user? Or do you see that as, no, this is actually going to be here to stay? What does it look like, not just now, but moving in the years ahead? What's your opinion? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's moving to the point where the end user is very intelligent. They're very up to speed with what's available. And I don't think you can... I don't think a salesperson can walk in and blow smoke and be successful. The end user is is very much aware of what's going on. Even better is the integrator. Mm. These are some really, really smart people. I don't know how it was back in the old, old days, but now you have an integrator that is qualified or certified with this application, this software, and they know exactly what they're doing. Of course, there are people out there that are, I guess, what, what would you say, a trunk slammer, a door slammer, something like that. But the integrators today are just really smart. They know, they got it figured out. Partnerships. I think you might have asked a question that this should have been the answer for. Mm. I've been amazed at the the partnerships in the industry. Everybody wants to be a partner with everybody. It's true. And I think it's a great thing. I think they they share knowledge, they share passion for the industry, and they share a sense of making our world more secure. Partnerships, yeah, it's going to keep going. I like that. And I want to touch back on something you said kind of in the introduction, and I would just love to get your thought on what is your favorite part about the security industry? This is taking too long to answer, isn't it? No, it's a good question. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot to like. There is. You know, we just came back from a trade show. We were at GSX, and my favorite par- part of the security industry was walking off the airplane in Dallas and going home. But that's that's just after a trade show, okay? <laughs> trade shows are rough. <laughs> yeah, they're, they are wicked. My favorite part of the industry would be the people in the industry. You guys are so different. And and I get to look at it from a different platform because I'm not going to buy your products and I'm not going to sell them. But I'd sure like to help you do that. And and that's something that we try to do. I just think these are the, the most awesome people. I've loved it. I've loved every minute. I think I've made good friends good friends outside of the industry that we don't have to sit down and talk about cameras or software or Mm -hmm. storage. It's the people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, it's interesting too, because the longer I've been in the industry, the more friends, as you said, you get to make, and then it's more like a family reunion. So as much as the trade shows are rough, it is good to see everybody. So it's (laughs) it's nice. It's very true. And you know, when I go to a trade show, I usually have an appointment every 30 minutes and at first, years ago, that was that was a great idea. But anymore, when I'm at uh, point A at a at a uh, an appointment, and I need to go to point B, getting from A to B on time doesn't work because I run into people that I know and and want to talk to for a minute, and I think that's terrific. I think we just need to get you a booth at the trade shows, and they can come to you. Let me make a note. Okay. (laughs) That's a great idea. (laughs) Well, you know, one of the things that we see it shows is not just products, but trends. So what are some of the current security trends that you're seeing right now? And is there anything that's uh, particularly exciting to you? One thing I want to just mention is uh, a a few years ago, a couple years ago, time goes by so fast. There was a comment made that the PTZ camera was going to fall off the wayside and, and you know what? I'm, I'm glad it hasn't. I think that's a remarkable camera. I think anybody who started that notion or that rumor was, that's just silly. It's a great camera. So is that something new? No. Uh, I like the idea of artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried something the other day just for the heck of it, and that was with chat GPT. Okay. And I, I think you're familiar with that. Yep. And I Hope your listeners are. But I went in, I thought, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to see what it's all about. And I wrote a few things, or I typed a few keywords and what I wanted. 
and hit enter, and within seconds, I, I thought I'd increased my knowledge <laughs> leaps and bounds. So I think that technology, I think there's technology we don't even know yet. Mm. We don't know what we don't know. Mm-hmm. I remember when bandwidth was a problem. It doesn't seem to be so much anymore. And whoever figured that out so that so much information could flow over the, the network, it, it's amazing. Well, in, in this industry, you know, we're really talking about storage of images. I don't know how that works. You better get somebody on here as a guest that can tell you that. Our CTO is right around the corner. There you go. So AI is a big trend. Any challenges you foresee that the industry may face in the coming years? Well, I'm not an AI expert. Um, I tell everybody I am, but I'm not. So the challenges, I think, with any technology are that it can be used for good. And unfortunately, it can be used for bad. And there are people who just thrive on being contrary about life. And that's going to be the problem. It's always a cat and mouse game, isn't it? It is. It really is. And I think we've seen that with, uh, with the IP camera or the network camera for good and for bad. And people who would build a camera and then have a back door on that camera so they can come in quietly, stealth-like, and take control of that camera. For, for bad use. Be yep. a scary world out there. Yep. Let's talk about the people again, because we always talk about technology on HID Connects, but you know, it's the, the technology that brings people together and, and the other way around too. So after all that you've experienced, what we are seeing, and it's a good thing in my opinion, is younger people coming into the industry. So what are your reflections on that? And my ultimate question would be, what advice might you offer for those younger folks coming into this industry that we care about so much? When I think back 25 years, there weren't young people in the industry. Um, They're just, they weren't. And all of a sudden now we see people, we see universities teaching, having programs for homeland security, physical security, and young people are, are getting it. And we got to have young people. I mentioned early on uh, our conversation about we would hire somebody out of college and have them come in and be the editor of a magazine. Isn't that what they went to college for? They don't always stick. But there are, uh, forgive me, there are kids out there, young people, who will and are in this industry, and they are already making a difference. In addition to that, I don't know if you were going to get to this question or not, but I'm very impressed with the uh, program of the Women in Security uh, program within the industry. I remember way, way back when you, you could go to a trade show with 25 of your closest friends as long as you were male. And it's, it's a great thing to see the number of women in the industry, but the number of women who contribute to the technology and the implementation of the solutions. Those are two very important things. Absolutely. I think we've got a really bright future ahead in the industry, which is really important because we've got a big responsibility ahead for this industry as well as the world changes. Oh, it's very true. And I think that now is where some of my responsibility lies is to make reporting this news appealing. I know that there are those that would like to break news and have a, you know, breaking news. You know what? That's not this industry. And my my answer to that is, if I was working towards a Pulitzer Prize, I would be the guy that's digging and clawing. I'm not working for a Pulitzer. I want to support the manufacturer. I want them to get their product out there when they want it out there. And so I don't mind keeping information quiet until they're ready. And so that's that's how I think I'm part of the industry, by supporting them. It's a good spot to be in. We appreciate that. Ralph, this brings us to the final question. 
And that's the question, which is the title of this episode. Looking back on your very unique and valuable experience in this industry, what have you learned? Wow, that's a great question. I've learned that there's a lot of smart people who are willing to share everything they know to make this industry better. And they'll share that with a competitor. And the fact that they'll share it with me makes, makes me feel part of it. And I see people doing that. I see uh, this fellow from company A and this young lady from company B, and they should be competitors, and they are, but they are talking about the same thing, sharing their ideas. I love to see that. I love to see people networking. It's amazing because we've kind of got this uh, larger good that we're striving to help, and that, that's very well said. Yeah, that's true. Very nice. Thank you, Matt. No, thank you. And uh, speaking of smart people sharing their expertise, Ralph, you're one of them. So, uh, you know, as the mayor of the security industry, we cannot thank you enough for not only coming, but traveling all this way, surviving Texas traffic in the heat. It's still hot out there. Um, and we really, really appreciate you. So thank you so much. It's been an honor and a privilege. So uh, truly appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Very much respect what you're doing here. Thank you. All right, my friends. Well, as you heard it, thank you so much and a bigger thanks to you for joining us for this episode. We truly enjoy creating this podcast and having very smart people like Ralph join us as well and hope that you equally enjoyed listening. Now, of course, we'll be back with another burning question on another industry topic in our next episode. Speaking of which, be the first to know when new episodes are published by simply subscribing to HID Connects. All you have to do is subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're connecting with us out in cyberspace, be sure to rate and review this podcast. You can also subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you're watching the videos and check us out on our social channels. And in the spirit of connection, hey, we need your ideas. So send us your questions and topic ideas for future episodes. Just drop me a line at media at hidglobal.com. So until next time, thanks again to Ralph and thanks again to all of you for listening. May your identities forever be secure.